Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to TLMI's second platinum sponsor, Lunch and Learn, presented by Domino. For the past 90 years, TLMI, a member-driven association using um, valuing community insight and advocacy, has helped advance the tag, label, and packaging industry by providing opportunities for members to network and learn. Today, we continue that tradition by hosting our second platinum sponsor, Lunch and Learn, presented by Mike Berry, the key account and OEM manager for Domino Digital Printing in North America. Mike has over 10 years experience with digital printing in the label and packaging industry, and Mike specializes, specializes in the hybrid printing presses, working with OEM partners to combine and digitize an analog print processes to bring greater customer benefits. You've got a real pro with you today, so please come with your questions. And Mike, the floor is yours. Thank you, Jack, and good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for taking some time out of your afternoons um, to be with us. Um, as uh, Jack mentioned, I'll be presenting on behalf of uh, Domino, uh, talking about the latest on what's going on with us um, and focusing on uh, a, a customer story as well. Um, I've got a presentation here that should take about 30 minutes uh, to get through, but please, along the way, if you have questions, pop them in the chat or the Q&A um, section within Zoom here. We'll have plenty of time at the end um, to get through all your questions and, and should be able to give you some of your uh, lunch break back. Um, I've added my contact information uh, to the bottom here. I have that also on the last slide as well. Um, please feel free to reach out to me after the presentation if there's anything you'd like to discuss in, in more detail one-on-one. Um, -on -one. Um, and with that, I will uh, dive into it. Um, so first of all, just a little bit about um, Domino. For those of you who aren't as uh, familiar with us, uh, we were founded in 1978, which gives us over 40 years of inkjet experience. Our world headquarters is in Cambridge in the UK. Our North American headquarters in the picture here is in Gurney, Illinois, just north of uh, Chicago. Um, we're an award-winning inkjet innovation company. Um, and as of 2015, we became the largest independent subsidiary within a uh, brother um, out of Japan as well. We're known for a couple key products in the industry in the UV inkjet label segment, our newest, the N730, which I'll spend the bulk of my presentation reviewing with you guys today. Um, of course, our tried and true N610i digital label press, our K600i monochrome print bar system for doing variable data imprinting on um, plexa presses, finishing systems, and the like. And of course, our X630i um, digital corrugated uh, press, uh, sheet fed press with aqueous inks designed for the corrugated packaging market as well. Um, as I mentioned, I'll be spending the bulk of this presentation talking about our label uh, solutions. But of course, if you have any questions on um, any of the products uh, within Domino, please feel free to reach out to me um, or your local uh, Domino account manager. So what I'm going to walk through today are a couple of things. One is going to be, I want to talk about the new Domino N730i and how that joins our robust inkjet portfolio. This press was debuted at Label Expo back in the fall uh, and has been a really great uh, addition to our family. Um, next, I want to talk about one of our uh, key customers, Grace Label. Um, who were the first North American user for the N730i uh, and an existing user of our N610i press. So I'll talk about how their, their story and how they furthered their investment in Domino with this newest technology. Um, and lastly, as I mentioned, we'll have plenty of time for um, open discussion and questions at the end. Uh, so without further ado, I'd like to dive in a little bit on the N730i and give you all an update on what's going on with uh, Domino technology. So as I mentioned, the N730i joins our robust portfolio for UV inkjet label solutions. Of course, the N610i is our well-established, proven, reliable platform. Um, we have over 250 installations uh, globally. Um, the press has been a great machine for many of our customers, uh, with a lot of our customers in the past several years adding second, third, and fourth machines to their arsenal just due to the reliability um, and consistency of that device as well. It's high-quality 600 DPI output. Um, with our great Domino UV inks that satisfy most label applications. Uh, and it's very easy to use and maintain. And of course, the N610i, which has been out there for a while, has been updated by Domino along the way. So buying an N610i today uh, is, is certainly not buying an outdated product. You're getting the newest and greatest in 600 DPI label technology with the 610. 
But we wanted to add to our portfolio and we launched the N730i, as I mentioned at Label Expo. And this has the revolutionary brother BitStar printhead, which gives us true 1200 DPI native quality. I'll spend some time touching on the printhead um, in an upcoming slide here. And this was to help us meet the market demand for even higher quality um, label applications like pharmaceutical and health and beauty. Um, and we've done a lot of enhancements to the press with our um, iTech features and other operator features that help with uptime and machine reliability, um, even be ab above and beyond uh, what we were getting before. Um, so to take you through a bit more detail on the N730i, um, first of all, uh, to talk about the throughput. So we have great print quality, exceptional print quality at 230 feet per minute. So this is the baseline speed for the units, so our highest quality color output print mode. Um, and we can run the high opacity white at full opacity um, at that 230 feet a minute as well. We don't have to slow the press down to run white. Um, secondly, is we have configured this robust platform to accept up to two flexo stations in what we would still consider a roll to roll format. So you can add a flexo station before the digital print engine um, and one after the print engine. So you could do priming and varnishing and other applications without having to, the need to go all the way up to a full blown uh, hybrid press, which of course we do offer as well. Um, I mentioned the 1200 DPI quality, which comes from my new brother, BitStar Printhead, and I'll touch on in the next slide. Um, the, uh, the design of the N730 has been redesigned to be ro more robust and with the usability of the operator in mind and also um, the reliability and how easy the machine is to maintain. One example of that is we've redesigned the ink, um, I'm sorry, the print bar arch so that it pulls out forward for maintenance instead of operators and service technicians having to crawl around the back of the machine and, and court, contort their arms to get to the print heads or whatever. Um, all that pulls out forward for extremely easy access. It has been a great feature of this press um, to date. Um, I mentioned that we have uh, uh, enhanced iTech features, which I'll touch on individually, but all these were designed to really help save time, increase quality, and increase uptime. We do have a brand new user interface with the N730i we call Sunlight. It's got some great tools uh, that make it easy to use, and I have uh, some more information on that throughout the presentation as well. Um, and then we have improved business efficiency uh, with this uh, print engine by uh, the introduction of a built-in JMF JDF server, which helps us connect to MIS systems and get some other great reporting tools out of the press. Um, so that's a bit uh, overall view of the 730. I want to dive into now to some of those details that I uh, just uh, uh, previewed there, starting first with the BitStar printhead from Brother. Um, so uh, for those who don't know, Brother is one of the largest inkjet uh, manufacturer printhead manufacturers in the world. Um, and we've now bring in the BitStar to the UV inkjet label um, family here. So it is a unique and patented uh, polycrystalline micro piezo technology. Um, so it is in the silicon MEMS family of printhead, very high nozzle density, um, and, and really gives us some extremely good accuracy and superior print results. We've improved reliability um, on this uh, 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 printhead. It's tested to go to trillions of actuations. Um, and we have the ability to do what we call voltage trimming to compensate for nozzle outs, deviated nozzles, and aligned density. So this voltage trimming actually gives us the ability to control uh, the voltage on an individual nozzle basis. So instead of just adjusting you know, the overall voltage of a printhead, which is how most printheads are designed, so you kind of line those up through the press, we can get down to an individual nozzle basis, which gives us even more control over the printhead and what we can do from an image quality perspective. Um, part of what helps this is we have this extra built-in electrode within the uh, printhead structure that helps with what we call crosstalk. Um, so this is as, you know, when you have a very high density printhead, which most 1200 DPI printheads are, when one nozzle fires, it creates some electrical noise um, that the other nozzles have to compensate with. And, and Brothers um, thought about this and built in this extra uh, electrode into the printhead that cancels out that noise um, so that one nozzle doesn't affect the quality of another nozzle. And that helps us really get some, some great smooth um, print across the web, uh, great gradations and extremely uh, 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 great accuracy. Um, it's designed to deliver this uh, native 1200 dpi output at 70 meters to 230 feet a minute, including white, as I mentioned before. And we are working on some um, faster print modes uh, to go along with that as well to be rolled out in the near future. Um, the, brother, the BitStar printhead has the smallest combination of droplet sizes. So not only do we have that 
made of two picoliter droplet size that you, you've grown to expect from a 1200 EPI printhead. But our um, steps up from there, our other droplet sizes are only 2.7 and 3.3 picoliters. So as we create that, use those different droplet sizes to create the image, that small combination of droplet sizes gives us even smoother gradients, um, really exceptional quality, especially in the highlights and mid-tone areas, um, and really critical for those applications that I mentioned, such as pharmaceutical and cosmetics. Um, and lastly, with bringing in the Brother Bitstar printhead, um, this puts us in complete control of our destiny with Domino. So we're, we're in complete control of the supply chain. And now that we manufacture our own printheads, our own ink, and our own print systems, we have all the integrated R&D to make sure that system, that inkjet system of printhead, ink, and platform all work perfectly together within Unison. And of course, uh, being able to control all the elements that come along with the supply chain challenges with that. So that's a bit on the printhead. I want to talk about now some of the iTech features that have been added to or enhanced on the N730i. Um, for those of you familiar with the N610i, you'll recognize ActiveFlow and CleanCap as some um, iTech features that exist on those platforms. Um, we have updated those and inevitably named them ActiveFlow 2 and CleanCap 2. Um, each have some uh, enhancements on their own. So first with the ActiveFlow, this is our full recirculation system. So on this press, um, the ink is recirculating at all places at all times, as long as the machine is powered on. Um, now this, we have added an additional tank in the uh, uh, ink cabinet. Um, so ink is pumped out of the storage container and into a tank where it immediately starts to recirculate. It starts to degas and it starts to get the ink at that right temperature. And then there's another tank within the print bar that the ink is pumped to, where once again, that same recirculation is happening there. Um, so this, this combination of, of the two different recirculation tanks helps us maintain the uh, a really great stability and performance, make sure that the head and the ink are ready to fire as soon as they're called upon, um, and really helps drive down um, any downtime um, and keeps print quality at the most optimal level. Um, the other uh, enhancement to our clean cap system, and this is our um, uh, automated nozzle cleaning system that, um, that our N610 users have uh, uh, grown to love. Um, so this cleans all the print heads in, uh, with the push of a button in under a minute. So really great for the operators. So we've carried that over from the 610 to the 730, but we've enhanced the design of our capping system um, to be able to not use uh, only just flush and a wiper blade, but also positive and negative pressure. So that capping uh, tray comes up and contacts the printhead and can actually apply some suction, um, which provides us a better clean and it reduces the fluids, both the ink and the wash that's used during the cleaning cycle. Um, and then lastly, we've enhanced that wiper blade uh, designed to also help reduce the flush even further. So some great improvements on the clean cap system that still allow us to clean all the print heads with the push of a button in under one minute. Um, next, we have a uh, set align, which has been brought back um, to the 730 as well. This is our uh, stitching of print heads across the web. Um, we build micro motors into our print heads so that we can virtually eliminate all stitch lines by getting really, really precise alignment of the print heads across the bar. And that voltage trimming feature I mentioned earlier with our ability to control the voltage on an individual nozzle basis, that helps us align the density across the web to be the most uh, uh, seamless uh, transition that you can get across an inkjet print zone there. So really excited with set align and what we've added to that as well. Um, and then the newest feature, uh, the new iTech feature, which has been introduced on the N730i is nozzle adjust. Uh, and this is our nozzle compensation system. Um, most 1200 DPI systems now have nozzle compensation just due to the amount of nozzles that are in that printhead. And the fact that there's enough redundancy built into where um, if an individual nozzle goes out, you can use a wizard-based um, system like Nozzle Adjust to hide that nozzle out by using the, uh, the adjacent nozzles um, to be able to cover that up. And we can also do this via the voltage trimming um, to help uh, make that even more precise. So that way, when you have a nozzle out, not only can we cover that up, but we can also make sure it doesn't produce a dark line, which sometimes you see with other nozzle compensation systems. So really excited about all these new iTech features um, alongside uh, that have been introduced to the N730. 
All right. Um, a couple other uh, changes and additions that have been brought to this platform uh, with the workflow. Um, we're still uh, partnering with ESCO and using an ESCO workflow on these systems. We're using uh, version four at the moment now. Um, and we've built in a couple things. So one with the version four ESCO software, it allows us to take advantage of our expanded gamut six color process. Um, for process images and colors instead of just spot colors. So it was in the past that if you had expanded gamut, um, that the ESCO system would assign those to spot colors that needed them. Now we can use it for all images and that will help get even more accurate color reproduction. It could also reduce ink consumption because if we can use the orange or the violet ink in an area of an image that has orange or violet, we're using less ink with that one ink rather than the combination of the CMYK inks there before. Um, so some good improvements there, little improvements that really have gone a long way. Uh, and lastly, we've added a profile checker, and this allows uh, a customer to print a uh, really easy to read chart uh, that can get scanned in very quickly. And it'll be able to, to be kind of a gut check to say, is this profile still within um, the spec of when I set it up or do I need to do any type of reprofiling process? So it helps keep track of your accuracy and make sure you're not chasing an issue that might be related to um, using the wrong profile or having the profile um, maybe that needs to be updated because the material has changed over time or something like that. Um, and additionally, on the software side, I mentioned our Sunlight user interface. This has been completely redesigned. Um, for those of you familiar with our 610, you'll notice the screen is completely different. Um, and the early feedback from our early um, uh, users have has been really great with this redesign here as well. So we have a brand new intuitive touchscreen interface that's really designed with production environments in sign, um, I'm sorry, in mind. Um, operators have a single view for all the key setup functions when they're setting up a job, um, which has been uh, a really great addition because in, in the past and with other systems, operators may have to switch between different screens to adjust different facets of what they're trying to do and set up there. Um, you can also visually see right on the screen where that artwork will fall on the web. Um, so it helps that image placement um, or rotation um, by getting that preview before you actually go and print anything, uh, and especially if you're aligning to other production processes, like if you have a hybrid press uh, and you need to align to die cutting uh, you know, downstream, or if you're printing on something that's pre-printed, being able to use this to line this up has just been a real useful um, feature that's been added. And our job queues have also been enhanced. So not only can cr we create um, queues that can, you know, uh, uh, set a, a jobs to print and one after another in succession, but we can batch different queues together. We can save those queues and allow us for really better workflow management. So, for example, um, you know, as the uh, you know production supervisor or something, or as the lead uh, uh, pressman, you can set up maybe different queues for your different materials you need to run. So I might have a queue set up with all the jobs I'm running on white bop, and then another another queue set up with all the jobs I'm running on semi gloss. And that way, I know once I've got through that queue of jobs, I'm just changing material, bringing in my new cube and uh, queue, and then going through all those jobs as well. Or it could be done to to manage on a shift basis. You could have here's all the jobs I want run on first shift. Here's all the jobs I want run on second fit shift, or here's some of my uh, jobs that are queued up that are, are part of my setup process and my normal um, check to see if the press is uh, within spec to be printed as well. Um, and of course, all settings and, and profiles and queues can be easily saved for recall later. Um, so you don't have to redo all this work all the time. Um, also, when you're making setting adjustments, you can not only see the setting you're changing to, but it always saves the last setting that you're um, uh, uh, in for that field so that if you do make a change and you notice a negative effect to what you're doing, you can easily revert back to what you, that setting that you had before. So real great um, uh, addition to the press of this redesigned user interface. Um, and so far, our, our operators um, really love this interface. I mentioned before also the built-in JMF server to this press. So this is really great for data management and for the business side of, uh, of, of the production workflow. So we can easily integrate with MIS systems like label tracks uh, and others. Um, and also our JMF server produces a nifty little HTML page, which can be accessed anywhere in the network uh, that you can see the job statistics, uh, press data, 
uh, some other things. I'll show some screenshots uh, going forward here. And this is all standard with the N730i. This isn't a paid upgrade or, or anything that you're um, going to have to pay a, a subscription for or anything. This just comes standard as some business management tools for the press, as we thought that was very important to our users and something that's been asked for for a while. And, and we've listened to that feedback. So you can see some of these are some screenshots that come from that HTML view. So that this is the view. If you think if you're a production manager or, um, you know, uh, uh, something in the business admin function, you want to see either, you know, all the jobs that have been run, what's queued up to run next to see where things are in the process, you know, remotely without actually having to go over to the press. Or if you have multiple presses, you can see in this other view, the system status view, this is showing all of our presses um, that are in this factory, what's being done on them at the moment. Uh, where's the the fluid information for those processes as well, um, and a lot of really great um, uh, features that have been uh, made along the way. So real excited about those. Uh, invite you all to come take a look at them, and and really that's the brief update I wanted to give on our press portfolio. We're really excited. Um, to add the N730i to our portfolio. It's been a great machine for us. Um, and it fits perfectly alongside uh, the N610i, which has been our, our money-making machine for our customers all over the globe. Um, so with that, I want like to transition to talk about um, one of our customers, Grace Label, and, and spotlight them a bit and how they further their investment in Domino Digital Technology. Um, so for those of you not familiar with Grace Label, Grace Label is a family company founded in 1975. They provide labels for multiple industries. They've got a big focus on the food and beverage industry. Um, in 2019, um, they uh, installed a Domino N610i to bring in their first digital label press due to really increases in short run demands. Um, and then in uh, uh, Earlier this year, they installed the N730i, and they were the first uh, at the time uh, North American user of that. Uh, so I'd like to talk a little bit about their story and how they're um, dealing with these two technologies. Um, and, uh, and, and as I mentioned, they were the first user. We now have several users in North America and even more throughout the globe. We expect to do more of these spotlights uh, going forward here as well. Um, so I sat down with Steve Grace a little bit um, before they installed the N730i press after they had made the decision to, to further the investment, had a conversation with him, and this is a bit snippet for it. And those of you that know Steve, he'll probably love that I keep using this picture, so please uh, please let him know. Um, so uh, first of all, I asked Steve, you know, what had the N610i really done for their business since they had installed that back in 2019? And the phrase Steve used to me is that it untangled knots within their organization. Um, so they had a press that was really better suited to run short run, uh, last minute changes, uh, gave them the ability to expand into their beverage market with high SKU count business um, and, and, and really allowed them to satisfy all their customers' needs. Um, and then the N610i, in his words, became a lead generating tool for them to get even more business in that organization. Um, when I asked how it affected the bottom line, um, he said the N610i and their digital department has become the most profitable part of their business, helped them in, win more work. Um, but what they were pleasantly surprised and what I, I, I actually hear similarly from other um, people when they install the N610 or an N730i as, as one of their first digital assets, that their Flexo business grew 15% without them adding any new equipment or people. And that really all came back from what he said about un untangling knots within the organization. Um, for them being able to have the right press for the right work, it freed up capacity on that Flexo press. And they were able to win even more jobs and put the more profitable work on that as well. So it's been a really great addition to the family. Um, and what caused them to then look to expand that um, and and go in with the N730i system. So I asked Steve right before the install what what excited him the most about the N730i, um, and he said most of their customers were satisfied with the current 600 DPI and the quality they were getting off the 610, but they were excited to bring some new 1200 DPI capabilities in house to upsell higher quality work, um, and also we're looking forward to the productivity improvements that came along with the N730 and that ability now to load balance between the two different presses as well. The two presses are uh, share the same ink family, um, so the properties that they're getting off of them are, are pretty much the same with, of course, the obvious um, 600 versus 1200 DPI quality difference. So I asked Steve, why did he choose to further his investment into Domino with the N730i? Um, and he really said how we've been a great partner to Grace Label as we, as we like to be with um, all of our customers, and they've been happy with the support that they've received. Of course, maintenance is crucial for the uh, for any inkjet machine, and our support team's really been there for them when, when we need them. Um, so they knew their next press was going to be a domino, and they're excited to be that first North American user 
of the N730i. Um, now, I, I did have a chance uh, to get some updated comments from Steve after the press has been installed and they've been busy with it for several months now. As you can see in the picture there, there's the happy production crew standing in front of the N730i that's been uh, put in their facility. And the picture on the bottom of our two presses, the N610 and the N730i side by side um, in that production environment. So a couple updates on how business has changed since they've installed the N730i uh, is as they suspected, they were able to win even more opportunities for some projects with their existing customer base that they weren't able to secure before. Um, and that was mostly due to extremely small tax and some reverse tax and things that that 1200 DPI output really helped them to, uh, to bring home for them. And then the, as the workload on the N610 was almost at full capacity, the N730i has come in and provided some much needed load balancing. And of course, it's an even more productive device. So they didn't just double their capacity, they more than doubled their capacity by adding the N730i, um, which has uh, come from that increased throughput that the N730i um, has added, which in his words has been a huge bonus. So. That's a little bit on um, on the update from Grace Label. And in, in summary, why did they choose to invest with Domino? It's, it's really what we call the Domino difference. So that we provide best-in-class service and support, award-winning technology choice with 1,200 and 600 DPI technologies to have the right machine for the right business, um, and our partnership-focused and, and market-driven approach um, to Grace Label and to all of our customers as well. Um, and of course, we also have, uh, for those that need it, in-house leasing programs, guaranteed trade-in programs, uh, and other financial models that help investing in Domino uh, to be very easy. The other thing I'd like to mention and remind is that with Domino, we believe in choice, uh, which is why um, we have been with our N610i platform and now we'll, with our N730i platform offering roll-to-roll -roll devices, the ability to put them roll to inline or near line, um, and of course, hybrid presses uh, with our various hybrid partners across the industry. We we'll work with some of the best partners in the industry here, some of our North American hybrid partners, all of which um, offer um, our systems in line with theirs and uh, that we should see more out of with the N730i as the year progresses as well. Um, and with that, uh, as promised, we're right about 30 minutes. Uh, that is a little bit of an update on what's new at Domino, um, our excitement with the N730i. We have um, both of our machines here in our Gurney, Illinois demo center. So I'd invite anyone to come um, and, and you know spend some time with us and take a look at those and see if it's right for your, either of the machines is right for your business. Um, and now I'll open up to any uh, questions uh, that we may have out there. Um, Jack, I don't know if there's any that have come in so far. Yeah, thank you, Mike. Um, we've got a question from another Mike, um, and that is if the uh, Bystar print head can be used on the N610i. Um, no, so the Bitstar print head is designed, um, or the N730i is designed specifically around that print head. Uh, the N610i uh, print uh, will stick with the Kyocera print head, the 600 DPI print head there. Um, so that's what we have both of the uh, options available. Um, and really the different print heads are to help us address both both ends of those markets. Awesome. Well, Mike, I hope that answers uh, your question. Um, and that's the only question I'm seeing at the moment. So we'll leave it open for a minute for everybody. Get your questions in. You can put it in the chat or in the Q&A section. Um, so we'll give you a minute here. But like you said, right, I, if, if I was in the area, when I'm in the area, I'm going to come out there and check out these machines. They sound awesome. Yeah, please do. We're, we're really excited to uh, share them. I've, I've just put this up again so that my email is there um, if anyone um, would like to reach out to set up a visit or has some questions they'd like to discuss one-on-one, -on -one, uh, be more than happy to do that. Absolutely. Well, we got another question coming in. Um, so how many N730Is have been installed? Um, so installed and running, I don't know the exact number, but it's over 10 systems now um, since we launched in the fall that are installed and running globally um, with a few of those uh, here in uh, North America. And awesome. the early feedback has been really positive uh, from our users. Um, these machines are are in production, and um, it, it's been a really great uh, experience with it so far. Yeah, so Tim, sounds like, uh, you know, if you're interested, talk to Mike. You might need to get your hands on one. And then Thomas asked um, if there are any options for backside serial printing for pharma. Yes, um, that can be done a couple different ways. Um, 
we have uh, our, I mentioned at the beginning there, our K600 monochrome print bar system, which is essentially like a single channel um, uh, variable print system. So that could be uh, installed in line uh, with uh, either one of the presses um, with a turn bar. We'd probably utilize one of our OEM partners to make a small hybrid press so that we can have a uh, a turn bar uh, and then a place to mount our K600 print bar. And then we can link up the workflows to be able to drive data to both the press and that single bar um, print as well. So you could do that all digitally, um, or you could also, um, well, I guess if you're gonna be numbering, you wouldn't do that with a flexo, but if you're putting a static image on the back, you could also do it with a hybrid print and uh, and and uh, over with a flexo plate as well. I just got options for everything. That's awesome. Um, and then Tim came in with another question and asked if there's any subtrait limitations. Um, do you have to prime the material? Um, so you do not have to prime the material. Um, it, 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 our, both of our ink, uh, presses use the same ink family, which is a real great versatile uh, UV ink. It sticks to a lot of different materials. The majority of what we get through our demo room, um, especially if they're higher quality materials, we do not have to prime. Um, and even in the cases where we have customers that priming, it's typically not for adhesion purposes or anything. It may just because it's a lower quality material. And if you put that prime layer on, you'll have a better ink flow on the top that you would get with any inkjet system. Um, so that would, uh, you know, allow you to just have a higher quality image. So it's kind of quality dependent at that point, you know, if you have to prime or not, which is why we have the options. And I'd say, you know, probably roughly 50% of our customers opt to have that priming just because, We've seen a lot of inconsistencies with materials over the last couple of years, um, and sometimes just going to that prime uh, beforehand just gives a you know a nice even level. But like I said, the majority of what comes through our demo room, we do not end up having to prime in order to to print and make look good. Awesome. Well, yeah, we got more questions flowing in, so glad we kept this open for a minute. Um, We've got a question asking if you can provide information on the throughput slash speed with white on the N730i. Um, how does it compare to the competition? Yeah, so as I mentioned on the N730i, the throughput with the white is our baseline speed of 230 feet a minute to get our, our full opacity white. Um, from what we understand, um, this is, if not the fastest system, um, right up there with the fastest systems in, in uh in the modes that they can print white ink with. Um, so I think we we stack up pretty well against the competition there with white ink as a digital white, I should say. And then, yeah, so kind of on the topic more on ink, um, Sean would like to know how does ink cost compare to standard, standard UV flexo inks um, based on the same coverage? Uh, so uh, obviously not the, uh, a straightforward answer with this one as well. But any of your other experience with UV ink jet systems and, and flexo systems, you know that the ink on a per you know liter basis is it, always more expensive when it comes to digital um, inks versus flexo inks. So when we look at kind of the per label um, breakdown, it really depends on that artwork uh, and that coverage and how um, our screening pattern is versus what they're doing. Are they making that image up with the four color process or is it a spot and a flexo? Um, so in some cases, it you know could be the same, and, and in some cases could be a little more. Um, it really comes down to that crossover point. So what we do at Domino is we take in all of your files, and we'll process them and tell you how much ink they'll use exactly. But then we'll be able to run that as a comparison of, of okay, you're going to have very minimal waste, very minimal setup time to get that job um, off and running, sometimes zero waste and zero setup time um, for specific jobs. Um, and we'll be able to tell you how that compares and where that crossover point would be with Flexo. We've got some really great tools in there. You could input all of your own data as far as what your Flexo costs are. We do that on a one-to-one -one webinar basis, and it would show you right then and there that, okay, this job might make sense for up to 5,000 labels uh, before it would make more economical sense to go Flexos. And I see some other jobs where you can print, you know, 50,000 labels or hundreds of thousands of labels. And it, and it makes sense just because of the, the makeup of that, or maybe skew counts or plate changes and whatnot. So um, I I'd, I'd invite you to please reach out to us and, and we could take a look at your work more specifically and, and help you make that decision. Awesome. Thank you, Mike. Well, you know, Sean, you, you heard him. His email is right there. Please reach out to him and uh, we'll, we'll definitely take a look into it. 
Um, and then one more question. I'll ask more roll in, but um, how was the pinning done on the new press? Um, uh, we we use pretty much the same pinning method on our N730i as we do on the N610i. So we have a pinning lamp after the color and after the white. Um, it's uh, LED pinning. Uh, we still use a, a full UV cure. Um, and we could vary that pinning percentage, which helps us give us a bit control over adhesion or quality and lay down. Um, so, so really the same if you're familiar with our systems um, and uh, you know, it's, it's the levers that are there that you need in order to control the quality. Awesome, good to know. Well, I think that might be the end of the questions. Um, so, you know, Mike, uh, on behalf of TLMI, Thank you. And thank you, Domino. Um, if you're interested in learning more about how your company, specifically everyone in the audience, um, can get involved in TLMI or how to host your own lunch and learn, please contact TLMI's engagement director, Dale Coates at dale.coates at tlmi.com. Um, we hope you enjoy today to, today's event. You will get an email um, with a post-event survey. We really would appreciate your feedback just to know what we can do for you in the future. Um, and Mike, you know, good luck to your bears this year. I think you guys have, have some real promise this year, going to be better than my bucks. Um, and to everybody out there, thank you for spending your lunch with us. This was really informative, really great. Uh, Mike, if you got anything you would like to say before everybody logs off, um, floor is yours. Yeah, well, I'll just say the bears will we'll try our best. And uh, thank you everyone for taking some time out of your day. I hope you learned a little bit. Um, looking forward to having more conversations um, with y'all uh, on the upcoming uh, days and months ahead. Thank you, guys. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Mike.